I'm really glad that I discovered the Klang, the canal system, a commuter waterway that if it's convenient to where you're going in Bangkok, it's a great way to get around. And today I'm going to take you to the old city, Bangkok's old city, to talk about a really unusual guy. Alexander MacDonald had led a Burmese army in jungle warfare, and he was now contemplating the palace that he'd lived in, attended to by servants and consorting with royal princesses. That's the building directly behind me, now under renovation. And they're really touchy about taking pictures of it. This is the closest I could get to it. I try to get onto the grounds, but it's guarded by not only security guards, but real policemen and soldiers, they're rather touchy about, uh, about their royal properties. This is the story about how Alexander MacDonald, a factory worker, a writer, a surfer, a roaming expat, became a U.S. Navy officer and a spy. And like countless other servicemen that wound up lucky enough to be stationed in Thailand at one point in their military career, when the time came for him to go home, to go back to the United States, he didn't want to go. So he founded the Bangkok Post. Directly behind me is a compound containing the offices and residence of uh, Thailand's prime minister. Although only two prime ministers have actually lived there since the end of World War II. Most, including the current uh, prime minister, Prayut, uh, elect not to live there. But their offices are contained within and a, uh, an eloquent banquet hall where Alexander MacDonald found himself having dinner with some very uh, high-level influential people in the Thai government and Thai business uh, shortly after receiving his orders to return to Washington. You see, Commander MacDonald's uh, services were no longer needed. The war was over. MacDonald had been uh, an aspiring young writer Prior to the Depression, he was doing quite well. Actually secured himself a job as a writer with a New York newspaper. Then the Depression struck. He found himself out of work like countless others on the East Coast of the United States in that period of time. So that's when he decided to just do some traveling. And he went to Hawaii where he took up surfing. For a while, he lived in Japan. And it turned out that he picked up on languages fairly easily. Taught himself Japanese and learned to speak and write Japanese. He was a bright young guy. He was well-educated, although not, not necessarily a, a, from the upper rungs of society. He certainly was comfortable about moving about uh, within the higher, the higher ranking people of society. Alexander became an attractive recruit for the Office of Strategic Services, a spy agency. It was a military agency that looked for older, well-educated men who could move comfortably in the upper realms of, of uh, foreign society in the different countries that they were in. And Alexander fit that model. They recruited him to the OSS and he did very well. Rose to the rank of commander. As I said before, he was leading Burmese armies during the war in guerrilla warfare against the Japanese who occupied Thailand. And now because he also had access to, uh, to, to resources and, and, and funds that he could direct at different organizations that were deemed to be friendly to U.S. efforts, especially after the war, that meant anti-communist. He was an influential guy, knew a lot of people. He was having dinner with the prime minister. He also knew the king of Thailand. Now, nobody, especially a foreigner, is on friendly terms with the king of Thailand, but he did have occasional access to him and actually gifted him a pistol. The young king liked shooting Donald gave him a pistol, and it was later the pistol that the young king died of wounds from a bullet fired from that pistol. It was a sad event. The official story is it was an accident. I'm going with the official story. I'm in Thailand. 
Behind me are intersecting waterways, canals, where Alexander MacDonald very fortunately located a commercial printing press in a building owned by a, by a royal, by a prince. At this location, now, I can't find anything old enough to fit the description of the building. So it's apparently gone. But what's here today is the very active and bustling Bobe Market. So what do you got? Hello. <laughs> It's just past four o'clock in the afternoon as I'm shooting, and this market is just coming alive. Now, as far as I can tell, this spot right here is the spot of the building that Alexander McDonald's printing press was in. The problem is it was a Japanese piece of machinery and nobody knew how to operate it. After a little research, Alexander discovered that there were two Japanese printers interned in a camp, in an internment camp, just north of Bangkok. McDonald decided that he needed them. And he also had the bureaucratic connections in both the Thai government and the American government get, to get the okay to, to, to have these guys released into his custody. Yeah, I think I found it. Just a few steps from the Bobe Marketplace is this Prince Palace Hotel, which is in the Bobe Tower. But yeah, that would be my guess, that this, uh, this building here is where Alexander McDonald's original printing press was located, or on the spot anyway, clearly that's a newer building than the one that existed there in 1946, presumably existed there. The names of these two Japanese printers were Kawasaki and Akuzawa. And in another illusion what I'm interpreting as an allusion to the ladies of Bangkok. McDonald got a hold of Kawasaki and Akuzawa and discovered that they were quite eager to remain in Bangkok because they too had eaten of the lotus or eaten of the lotus blossom. Yeah, yeah what, what else could that mean? I'm standing in front of Alexander McDonald's legacy, the Bangkok Post building. After his dinner at the Prime Minister's residence where he gathered up a few investors and um, a board of directors uh, to begin the get Bangkok Post, Alexander McDonald uh, was very successful at getting his newspaper up and running and it became what it is today. The, 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 uh, uh, the paper, or the English-speaking paper in Southeast Asia with the largest circulation. Very successful newspaper. Sadly, Alexander MacDonald was forced out of Thailand in the mid-50s by Prime Minister Pibun, who was an authoritative guy who I guess he didn't like the editorial criticism coming from the Post. MacDonald wound up selling his interest and moving back to the States, where he did well in the States. He was a successful kind of guy. He managed a resort in Cape Cod and eventually wound up with the Marblehead newspaper, I forget the name of it, but a paper in Marblehead, Massachusetts, where he became the publisher and worked there until he died in 2000, where he died at 92 years of age. He's a very successful guy, as was he and his colleagues from the OSS. McDonald, Jim Thompson, and a Thai guy named Udam Patpong. Local expats will probably be familiar with Thompson and the name Pat Pong. And I'm gonna go into their story in my next two videos because these guys, especially the two Americans, uh, were very successful. Actually, Pat Pong was very successful as well, but the two Americans were service people that didn't wanna go home after the war. And they stayed here and created big successes here in Thailand. And they had a big impact that those three men that I mentioned their enterprises that they engaged in after the war had a huge impact on the development 
of culture in Bangkok, of the Thai culture within Bangkok. And a lot of that was an unintended consequence of their success. And I'm going to go into the details of that as I talk about Jim Thompson in the next video and then Udon Patpong and the one after that. And we're going to see how a lot of the things that the, the kind of bawdry side of the, the tawdry side of Thailand that is so well known around the world was kind of an un, unintended consequence of these guys' successes in a lot of ways. So, yeah, we'll talk about the next video. Um, I like telling success stories, and certainly Alexander McDonald's story was, was certainly that. This is a very successful guy in his own country here in Thailand, and then again back in his own country, uh, and he lived a long and productive life. I admire people like that. So, yeah, Bangkok Post. Started by an American after World War II. An American spy at that. And it's still here today, the largest English-speaking publication in Thailand. See you the next time.